Hello everyone. Susie started um, just sorting out the uh, broom cupboard in um, our little kitchen just here. And uh, she's painted the doors and I concreted the floor the other day. But she wants me to sort this shelving unit out. Um, there's two shelves in there. They're not the best, but they'll be fine. Um, so there's the front piece. There's the second piece. And <laughs> this will make you laugh. This should go into a point. <laughs> that was the back piece that takes you into the corner of the shelf. Uh, so obviously I don't know what they've done there. They obviously only had that piece of wood. So I've just cut another one, which is there. But I've just got to add another piece just to bring it to a fine point. That was lying around, so I thought I might as well use that. Um, now this won't go back in one piece because... Um, getting it out the angle etc in between the battens uh, it's two pieces uh, they're not connected these two so it'll go in as two pieces um, but I'm gonna tidy it all up sand it all down I can't remember I, whether I treated this for woodworm or not so I'm gonna do it anyway and hopefully I'll tidy that up and it'll look um, better than it was so that's what I'm doing at the moment so I've just got to get these pieces prepared for a glue up with clamps and then I can't really do any more until the glue's gone off. Right, well I've clamped those pieces, I've glued them, clamped them, and I put some dowels in between them all. That just gives them further strength. Um, I know it may look a bit iffy, because obviously this piece here I've obviously painted at some point. So I think I must have been painting some hinges or something like that. Um, doesn't matter, because I'm going to sand it all down, and then right at the very end I'll check the measurements in the cupboard, and I'll, I'll get what they call a router, uh, and it'll give us a lovely straight edge, and it'll make it all flush and neat and tidy. I think Susie said she was going to paint it anyway, because the wood won't match, uh, even of oil it, so um, I could put a stain if she doesn't want it painted. So that's fine, but I've got to wait 24 hours now, or overnight, I prefer when I'm doing a glue up, leave it overnight. So I can put that to one side, and then this front piece, I've got to um, take this latch off it. And there's a couple of nails in there for some reason. And then I can sand all that, and, get, and then again, I'll do the edge, the two edges, when I do this one. And then it'll all be neat and perfect. Um, so yeah, so s sand that now, wait until tomorrow, then I'll sand all that. So yeah. That'll look okay. There is a second shelf in there, um, but the wood's a lot thinner, so I may have to go and buy some wood for that, because it um, depends what she's going to put on it. It's just it's got to be careful of weight so it doesn't sag. Uh, right, so I'll get on with that.
Well, whilst I'm waiting for that glue up, I'm going to go outside because there's a repair needs to be done and um, it can't be put off any longer. It needs to get done. So I'm going to go do that now. Now, as you can see, um, there's quite a gap here. Now, the bedrock comes all the way out, but it's obviously worn away here and left a rather large gap. And above me is about three and a half, four meters of wall. Now, it's very thick wall as well. So I've got to shore this up. Otherwise, one day it'll just collapse. Um, it looks sturdy enough and this, um, if you remember in two or three videos ago, they, they actually dug up down here and uh, there was a lot of vibration on the ground when they dug the whole of this lane up uh, and yet it's still here. So I don't think it's going to collapse imminently, but at the end of the day, we've got to sort it out. Um, and one, of, one of the problems is this is our walled garden the other side um, and all the walled garden um, heads downhill from the top end down to this corner behind me and this road that we're in now comes downhill and the road the other side of the wall where i was removing all that ivy just around the corner there that slopes up so it's everything's sloping down here so when this when all the soil gets wet and i would imagine you know way above my head is is all soil here the other side of this wall so there's a lot of pressure during the winter when it's all wet so you know got to make sure this wall is secure so that's what I'm going to do today. I've mixed up a bit of mortar just to get me a base and then I'm going to build up and I've brought some stones with me, uh, but I need to dig this soil out so I've got something firm for it to sit on. I was a little naive in thinking a couple of buckets would do it. So, <laughs> but there you go. <laughs> I've forgotten how big this gap was. <laughs> Well, that's it. I've just uh, brushed off um, 
all the rough bits just to smooth it off a bit but I'll come along tomorrow morning when it's had proper time to dry and just get a little wire brush on the stone to clear them up uh, but yeah that's it that's now supported that's now supported uh, but you can see there's a lot to do I've, I can get my hands in here but these aren't moving but they still need to be sorted out um, and like here there's a bit here that needs to be done on the other side um, but there's a lot to do on this in, on these walls a lot to do I'm looking at a big chunk over there that's out uh, but anyway this is in it's supported and and this was probably the worst bit um, although there are areas all over the, the walls you know that's quite a wide area not to have full support under it so I'm relieved I've done that and just to give you a bit of perspective here, this wall here runs right down to the corner up to our gate and it's about 70 metres, 80 metres, something like that. And I've just had a quick tot up and I reckon we've got somewhere in the region of about 330 to 350 metres of perimeter wall. Uh, we're completely closed in here, completely. And... Um, yeah so all the way around the property we've got about 350 50 meters and of course i've got to look after both sides so that's nearly 700 meters uh it's one wall which i share with my neighbor and i only have to worry about my side so you know i've got about 700 meters of this to to repoint really uh, and some of it of course behind me down to that corner that's four meters high uh, but most of it's um two meters high so you know 700 meters times two meters high uh, <laughs> that's a lot of work but susie and i have always said this is a lifetimes project so but the good news is we're not going to run out of content any day soon and you lot have 25 years of repointing videos to look forward to yay Okay, well that's it. So I've sanded it all, so it's nice and smooth, ready for paint. Um, I'm assuming Susie's going to paint it, or she might line it with something, I don't know. Um, I've trimmed this edge off, as you've just seen, and this one here. So yeah, I'm ready to fit. Um, I did a trial fit, it worked okay. I, this, where the pieces were joined uh, with a tongue and groove, they wouldn't go back in, so I've cleaned off the tongue and groove and then waxed it and got some clamps and squeezed it back on so it's now one unit again so there you go so yeah that's ready to go in um so i'll go and do that and underneath um underneath the the latch will go back on and then susie's bought some um wire baskets uh, to hang underneath so she can put things like dusters in and i think we've got to say thank you to cameron for those he saw them on our wish list and bought them for us so uh when this is all painted up we'll put those on so thank you cameron and uh, thank you Anne and Mary this week uh, who bought us some coffees uh, after Wednesday's vlog. So thank you very much you two, very kind. Um, if you're wondering where Susie is, Susie's made a quick trip back to the UK. Uh, just a quick three day trip on a family matter, nothing serious, but she went back there. Uh, so that's why she's not in today's vlog I'm afraid, but um, that's okay. She'll be back uh, in a few days time, a couple of days time. And she's uh, having a nice time meeting up with uh, some family. So that's good good for her. So, um, yeah. Yeah, she phoned me uh, last night and I said, oh, what are you doing tonight? She said, oh, we're doing a barbecue at her sister's house. 
And um, so I phoned her this morning and she said, I said, oh, how'd your barbecue go? We couldn't, it was too wet and windy. <laughs> so they went to the pub instead. But uh, yeah, that, that was always the problem when we were living in Britain. You organise a, a barbecue, you know, middle of August, and you're looking at the forecast all week, whether it's going to go ahead or not, you know. So, but there you go, that's uh, that's the, that's a shame. But uh, right, I'm going to go and fit this, and then I'll get the second one. But uh, I think you've seen enough of shelf renovations, so I'll leave it at that. So I'll go and put it up, and in the meantime, you solved a mystery for us last week. Now, if you didn't watch uh, Wednesday's um, vlog, which actually went out Thursday morning, but there you go, you'll not know what I'm about to talk about. But to, just a brief recap, uh, when Susie and I were cleaning the attic the other day, we found these, um, lots of these, this is probably a fifth of them. Um, a lot of these cones, uh, these funnel shaped things, metal uh, with a big hole in the centre and three holes around the top. Um, so we asked the question because we have absolutely no idea what they, what they are. And, of course, you didn't disappoint. We had lots of suggestions. Um, most of them, if not all of them, very plausible. But the one common suggestion that we kept getting was that they are parts from a milk and cream separator. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there is such a thing. <laughs> uh, which I suppose is pretty obvious when you think about it. And, of course, a couple of people said... Um, there are, there are parts from it, but there's an awful lot missing. So you need to go back up into the attic and have another search around. So we did. And we found this. And, of course, it didn't make sense until I Googled it and I saw all these antique uh, cream and milk um, machines separating machines this suddenly made sense because we have seen this before but um you know this this for example and Susie said oh I don't know what that is that looks like an old part from a car or something so we just left it there and didn't think about it it's really dusty um so I'll show you what we've got and I'll, what I'll do is I'll put a picture on the screen now one that I found there's quite a lot of them but this particular one that I found looks very similar to all these components um and I'll put that on screen now. And to make it work, you need two spouts, two chambers, if you like. And the milk will go into one and the cream into the other. Uh, but you need a crank handle. Now, this, this part's broken. It's broken off. But obviously, that cranks. Uh, presumably... There's no handle to it other than this, so that spins around. Uh, that's just some old newspapers. You need some funnels. I don't know whether that's part of it. And a bigger funnel. Now, I presume these cone-shaped things go in there. I don't know exactly how it works. I haven't really had much time to to look at it. And this uh, big container, I'll get this out of the way, has got a tap there and a spout. And so you'd put all the milk in here. It would sit on top of the frame, as in the picture. And then you'd crank it and then it would do its magic. And I presume it's some sort of centrifugal force. Um... So yeah, but of course we're missing one major component. Component that's the stand that it would have sat on, um, and it would have been a big, sturdy metal stand because obviously when that's full, that would uh, be quite heavy. Um, I haven't yet found that, but there are places that I wouldn't be surprised to find it um, in the barn over there, for example, the open barn. It's full of wood that's been dumped. I would never be surprised, knowing the state of this place when we moved in that it's it's under that lot somewhere um but i don't know so we haven't got the stand as as we speak but we do seem to have all these various components so these are all the other cones so it's very interesting
So thank you to everybody. It's brilliant. You know, you ask a question and there's always someone who knows, but there was quite a lot of you that knew. So who would have thought milk and cream separator? So seeing as how you're all on form, one more question. What's next week's lottery numbers? You never know. <laughs> um, it's got something on here that's been embossed in it, but I can't quite read it. I'll take a photo of it and put it on the screen, because it'd be nice to know the maker. So there you go. Right, I'm going to dust myself down. Um, that's it for today. Thank you ever so much for watching. Susie will be back before the next vlog goes out, but she probably won't have time to um, do any filming. So I'm afraid she probably won't be in that one either. But that's okay. You get me. <laughs> okay. So thank you ever so much for watching. And uh, Wednesday's vlog that we put out, uh, Thursday, um, it didn't get many views. Now, it's holiday season, I appreciate that, but it's been our lowest viewed vlog for quite a long time, although everybody seemed to enjoy it. So um, if you haven't watched it, it's there for you because we are trying to get back into the habit of doing two a week now. So if you subscribe and put your notifications on, um, you won't miss one. So thank you. I'm off for the afternoon now. I'm going to chill out in the potage air. I've got a few things to do and I need to go pick myself some dinner. So I shall see you next time. Bye.